Hi, I'm Linda Ray, the Director and Co-Founder of New Resource Group. One of the revolutionary insights to come out of neuroscience research over the last decade is that of neuroplasticity. Up until recently, the brain was regarded as a physiologically static organ and that our brain structure was mo mostly immutable uh, after those huge developments we see in early childhood. However, we now know that the brain has the ability to reorganise itself by forming new neural connections, something that I'm sure many of you will be happy to hear continues throughout life. Not only does neuroplasticity allow the neurons in the brain to compensate for injury and disease, but it can adjust in different response to new situations, different stimuli and changes in the environment. While this seems like a small discovery, it's really important and it's really powerful because it means that we're not captive to either nature or nurture in the way that we once thought that we were. While both nature and nurture play important roles in shaping our brains and informing our memories, behaviours, responses and habits, they are not our destiny. You know, the old thing that we thought um, you couldn't teach a dog, an old dog new tricks? Well, you can. We have much more control than we used to believe. In effect, we can rewire our brains. I've thought a lot about what neuroplasticity means, not, not just to the stroke or accident victim, to, but to all of us in our everyday lives and for us as leaders. Simply becoming more aware of our responses and paying attention to the ways we want to alter them, they, it can give us the results that we're after. After all, where attention goes, as the old saying, energy flows. And what flows through our attention, in fact, sculpts our brain. I came up with the term attentional intelligence a little while ago to, to describe the practice of using the, the power of attention to change the brains in subtle ways. Attentional intelligence is, is kind of a, an intelligence that when, when it's highly developed, it allows you to effortlessly but mindfully notice where your attention is at any moment and to intentionally choose where you want it to be. It's about actually not allowing your attention to boss you around. It's important to be really curious about our attention if we intend to improve our attentional intelligence. And, and the best news, I think, is that it's not hard to do. What is hard to do is to make it a habit. Begin by more intentionally noticing what is happening for you at, at um, what we refer to as the meta-sensing level. Ask yourself, you know, what is happening in your body in the moment? Are you feeling calm or are you feeling a, a level of panic or guilt? Next, ask where is your attention focused that may be making you feel this way? Is it focused on a thought or a narrative that keeps replaying in your head a bit like a broken record? Or alternatively, is it exactly where it is of most benefit and where you want it to be? The key is in noticing where your attention is focused and being more intentional in where you want it to be focused. Next, look at stepping out of your thinking in a kind of impartial spectator way and notice what is in your narrative. What are you thinking? And do you need to shift your thinking to support you to focus your attention in a different direction? We live in a period of unprecedented complexity and distraction. It's very easy to lose focus, to succumb to what I call bright, shiny object syndrome. This is actually a normal response because we know that the brain is designed to seek novelty and stimulation. It's just that too much stimulation and novelty so you can, can wreak havoc on focus and ruin your productivity. Every time you get distracted by an email or the ping of a text message or um, you know, the phone ringing, it can take up to around 23 minutes to regain your focus, particularly if you're on the verge of an insight or in a really heavy, what I call a heavy thinking task. Imagine what effect this has on productivity. Not only are we bombarded by these kinds of environmental interruptions, but, but our internal states also buy for our attention at any, any given moment. Therefore, it's important for each of us to be aware of our attentional profile. Are you easily distracted? Do your moods take over? Do you find yourself on um, automatic pilot? I love um, Harvard professor Ellen J. Langer. She refers to, to this as when the lights are on but no one is home. Developing attentional intelligence can help you tame both types of distractions. The practice of noticing where your attention is and bringing it back to where you want it to be will over time rewire your brain. You'll be able to notice distractions for what they are, your brain looking for novelty and reward. When you understand this, it can assist you to resist the temptation of the smorgasbord of distractions vying for your attention. You'll be better able to focus on the task at hand 
And at the end of the day, you might even have some energy left over to do some of the fun stuff. <laughs>